Hey everybody, my name is James Davenport, uh, and god damn it, can I, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'd fuck it up. Yeah. Hey everybody, and welcome to the PC Gamer Show. My name is James Davenport, and I'm standing in for Tom Marks. He's over in the UK, uh, checking out the uh, PC Gamer Weekender event we have going on. He's going to be doing some hosting over there. Um, today, I'm joined by Tim Clark, our global editor in chief. How you doing, Tim? Pretty good. Second appearance yeah. of 2017. <laughs> Obviously, a fan favorite. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and uh, we got a new face, fresh face on the show. We got Matt Paget. Our uh, weekend editor. Hey, how are you doing? Super duper. Good. Good to have you guys. Well, yeah. How, yeah. How does it feel to finally be on the PC uh, Gamer Show, Matt? What's your heart? Uh, it feels. It feels good. I feel alive. Yeah. Uh, For once. <laughs> yeah. For once. Totally. Right on. I, I forced Matt to make his bed in the background while we were preparing. <laughs> yes. <this> yes. Video. <laughs> And that is, well, that, that is it, ladies and gentlemen, how I've risen to the it, top of this it organization. It wasn't so much that you forced me. It was that you psychologically Shame. tortured me <laughs> into doing it. Well, you know. I All mean, I'll say is don't stand up again, Matt. Yeah, just, yeah. just stay down, please. That thing they this say is about a family-friendly hey, show. That thing this they is how we did it in journal school on the anchor desk, man. We yeah. No pants, just a shirt and a jacket. That's all we needed. Working from home does like things. Catholic <laughs> seminary journalist school by the sound of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. uh, yeah, we got some good stuff going on today. We got Now Plan, you know, what we're up to uh, gaming-wise in our spare time. Uh, we're going to chat about The Division because Tim and I... Uh, that's the new hotness. It's the new hot. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck are we doing? Tom leaves for one yeah. week, and we're talking about the division. Um, but it's been almost a year since that came out, and we both kind of recently got back into it. So we're gonna talk about that. Uh, we're gonna talk about Resident Evil 7's Madhouse difficulty because Matt's been playing through that on Twitch, and kind of branch off into uh, you know how difficulty is done or right or wrong in games. Um, and then we're gonna talk about Valve dumping green light. Recently, uh, in a roundtable interview, they said they're moving on from Greenlight and into Steam Direct. So yeah, that was part of a bigger visit, which uh, mm -hmm. Evan at US EIC flew up to. Yeah, flew up to Seattle to speak to Gabe and yeah. Co. Sit down at the table came, with the man. Came back with a lot so, of stories. A lot of good stories. Uh, and then we'll do uh, some uh, Q and A. Uh, we're not live because we had some technical difficulties, but uh, we still got some questions coming in the Discord. And uh, we have a few we still snagged in the Twitch chat. So we'll be answering some of those. Uh, but right now, I want to know what you all been playing. What have you been playing, Tim? The Division. Yeah, the I, Division. Think you <laughs> I think you foreshadowed should that. We just, too, should we just skip you? <laughs> Anything else? Any cards? Uh, I'm playing, um, I'm trying to juggle still Elder Scrolls Legends hmm. and Hearthstone. Okay. And S uh, sneaking it in between bits of work and stuff. Any. Any changes to the what are they? Yeah, called? there's a lot Meta? going on. I have to be careful what I say because mm. um, some of the stuff we know is under embargo mm -hmm. and will probably be probably will have been announced by the time this video comes out. But um, exciting. Th so there was a couple of nerfs this week. They changed small time buccaneer, right. uh, which was a pirate, a pirate that was um, very oppressive. Uh, <laughs> and they also changed a card called Spirit Clause, which was a shaman weapon. And I think Ooh. that there's not a huge amount to say about them because both were kind of. They're both changes that are so obvious that yeah. there was there was almost like this just exhale of like oh they did something <laughs> on Reddit once uh, finally once that happened and they also changed the way the ladder works actually which is something that I called for in my soothsayer like yeah. uh, what we want from Hearthstone in 2017 article which is now when you get to ranks uh, 15 10 and five even if you go on a big losing jag you don't go down you don't mm. drop anymore. And the idea of that is to try and make it easier to experiment without okay. kind of, you know, that anxiety okay. of, oh, everyone will think I'm a scrub if I fall back down to rank 12 or whatever. So I think those are good changes. Um, there, are some, there are some really big changes coming yeah. down the pipe, which, like I say, by the time you hear this, you may have been announced. Can you say how you feel about these changes? Can you say uh, I feel psyched, but I also okay. feel psyched because I think a couple of them are going to cause drama, and I love watching it all burn. Hmm... Well, I'm looking forward to not understanding any of it whenever it comes out. <laughs> James James uses a James uses a standing desk at work and he oh, stands next to me. Yeah. So he can like see my second monitor the whole time. <laughs> yeah. So anytime I'm trying to like sneak in a fucking game, like after lunch, James is like, Oh, he's playing cards again, I see. Like, well, I mean, yeah, it's it's kind of a like, cache I can use for whenever I wanna dink around for a bit and play what well, I don't really have a good dink around game though. Anything I can hop into, so you're dinkering around 
Dinkering a word. Dinkering. You, you were fort a bit in the office for a while. For, yes, yeah, I was uh, uh, doing some forts uh, whenever I could, but uh, I don't know, I've kind of fallen off of that. But flamed out. Flamed out a bit. Um, yeah, Matt. What about What's you? Up? You've been playing. What have some I been playing? Video games. I hear. Yeah, man. Uh, we'll, we'll get to Resident Evil Seven. I'll, I'll leave that where it is. Uh, but I've been playing like since November. A lot of Overwatch three v three. Ooh, yeah. I, I was I came in and played with you for about a week or two there, strong. And you're still going, huh? Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's 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 done what I wanted from Overwatch, where Overwatch is a very character focused shooter, and a lot of their abilities are like fighting game moves so mm. like the hook uh and you're, you're playing footsies like you would in a fighting game yeah. so i know that roadhog can't get me from this far away with his hook so i'm just going to keep backing up as he keeps getting closer yeah. and 3v3 really lets you play it as a fighting game or even in some cases a stealth game like I'll, I'll play mccree and i will actually sneak around the map and pick off uh like weaker characters mm. as they kind of stray away from the group so and I keep finding stuff like that that I can do in this mode, and it's just I can't stop. And I think it's a sickness, but <laughs> it's so good. Are you playing with oh. the same the same two other people? Is yeah, it? yeah. We have uh, I have a group with my roommate and someone else, and uh, we just clean up shop pretty much every yeah. single game. That's good. Yeah. Oh, is the format so elimination good. or is it points? Uh, elimination, and that's why it's 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 to me interesting because it. In, in the traditional mode, you, you, you can kind of die and it's not going to wreck your game. You know, it's not going to lose the match for you. In this one, you have to be careful. Like, you have to really be careful. Um, because if your healer's gone, you might just be done for unless the other two teammates are amazing. It sounds a little or, bit like uh, Trials of Osiris in Destiny. Hey, yeah, so, yeah. Maybe three, right? Which, Elimination. Exactly, yeah. So, um, Get sacked for mentioning that one. All. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? Uh, but... You know, it, and it's actually a big thing about it is that, like, uh, when we first started playing, like, when James joined us, it was like, no, we need a healer every round. Right. And was now we've gotten to James, a point. Was that because James was bad? So you were just like, oh, no, yeah, right. you I was pretty healer. decent. Just stay he's back. A, he's the... a good Lucio. He can stand there and heal people. Fuck it's you. pretty, you know. Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, now it's like, we don't even go with a healer. We're all, okay. we're two tanks and a DPS and we're messing shit up. So it's really good. Like, is that can I swear the, on this? I guess. You can swear on this. Is that, so okay. Is that, that is should that have been like, something I asked first. <laughs> is that like the meta? Is everyone playing the same comp or is it really diverse? Um, no, that's, that's the crazy thing about 3v3 is that like it definitely, every now and then it definitely seems like this is, this is the go. This is how you do it. You go diva soldier and Anna. But now it's now it's like oh well some people are using Symmetra really effectively since uh, her latest oh, patch yeah, and stuff like that, and Symmetra is like almost up there with Roadhog in a way that is super just super frustrating to play against her because she's become this crazy like damage dealer since that patch and it, it's it's become and, and that's the great thing about three v three is that the patches and the changes to the characters carry over into this so you're always you're always on your toes. It's not like you find a solution to everything and then you're mm -hmm. good. It is actually like, oh, okay, now Diva's a little more squishy. We have to figure this something out. So my roommate, who was a Diva guy, uh, is now playing a lot more Zarya and hmm. finding new combinations and new tricks and new like, like uh, we joke around. I call it tag teams. Like I froze a Roadhog and then a Reaper jumped out of nowhere, jumped on his head and then just shot him in the head. And it was right. like this insane WWE-like yeah. tag team move. And stuff like that makes this such an exciting mode, and I, I freaking love it. That's exciting. Yeah, I, I should you, get back into it. Do you wear trousers when you're playing 3v3, or is that the same as your uh, it, podcast you, you, appearances? You, it's a full suit. you got to be professional <laughs> when you play 3v3. Right. Uh, yeah. I only do podcasts in trousers yeah. or in uh, underwear. Good. Good to know. <laughs> All uh, anything else uh, yeah, you're playing? Anything notable? As I mentioned? Okay, I'll go to me then. Uh, I recently, uh, out of nowhere, decided to say, play a Hyperlight Drifter. Um, and so I powered through, like, uh, I'm, I think I'm in the end game because the southern zone is the end game, I think. Did you end up playing that or beating that? No, but I read Tom Senior was saying, yeah. uh, Tom Senior, the UK uh, online editor, he was saying he'd... he'd um, jumped back into mm. Hyperlight Drifter and had kind of um, had felt like a sense of shock because he was expecting 
just from rem remembering what it looked like, this yeah. sort of Zelda-ish experience, but he was, you know, it's brutally hard it's still. super hard. Uh, yeah, I just, like, said, fuck it, I don't have time, and went to the easy mode. And even easy is, like, pretty punishing. Wait, what? I was playing on normal. Uh, and I never play on normal. It, yeah, I, I went back on normal, and uh, some of those bosses, like, it's just, it's just like, I don't know, I, I appreciate what it's doing, and you still, like, the good thing about the easy mode is it's a good difficulty downgrade, so to speak. The bosses are rough, though. Um, bosses are still rough, but, like, and you still get punished for making the same mistakes. You can't just charge in and, you know, because you're a little squishier or the enemies are, like, softer, uh, just expect to live. It's, it's the kind of game where it's very, for an action game, very easy to go on tilt. Yeah. Like, you, you, you die dumbly a couple of times. You feel like your head getting hot, you know? Like, you, it feels like <laughs> too much, there's too much blood in your skull. Absolutely. And then you're, like, you're running to try and get back to the boss room. Yeah. And then you're, like, getting killed by, a, like, a bat or something or just falling down a hole. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's super frustrating and rewarding in that way. Um, but it, I think I'm just having a good time soaking in the art and... You know, have, having it be a little bit less of a stressful thing because it's so beautiful. Um, and the music is also, it's by Disaster Piece, the guy who did is soundtrack for It Follows and Fez. And is this to kind of like gird your loins before the the new Dark Souls DLC comes out as well? I, I think so. There's this podcast I listen to and they they basically cover any Souls-like game, which is maybe a, a reductive term, but, and they are recently doing Hyper Light Drifter and I was like, ah, I'm going to get back into that and uh, same with Momodoro, Reveries of the Moonlight or something. and So I'm trying to like really get down on all the games riffing on Dark Souls, or at least uh, you know, in, in that sphere of influence. We, um, we may come to it when uh, yeah. Matthew Paget talks about Resident <laughs> Evil 7, but um, I don't know if he's played any of the, the, the DLC. I tried it out on PlayStation because it's not out on PC yet. And I, I hated the uh, Ethan Must Die mode, which is their kind really of like... Hard. yeah, Yeah, which is their kind of ultra-hardcore... Maybe we can get to that because, like, I think in the Resident Evil Seven, that seems to be like one side of the coin. But uh, other than that, I've been playing a game that recently came out and I did not give a shit about until uh, I got my hands on it, and that's For Honored. For Honored. For Honor, not <laughs> Dishonored. For Honor. For Honor. It's a uh, you know, it's the Ubisoft's latest mashup, uh, historical mashup. Isn't of, it like, basically that History Channel show, which is like ninjas versus yeah, knights yeah. Yeah. that turned into reality? I mean, like you can see that's how it's been pitched in like a, a so meeting in dopey. Montreal. Uh, it, yeah, yeah. In the, its presentation is the dopiest, dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, it, I mean, it, it's endearing because it's like, yeah, what if a Viking fought a samurai? And it's like rendered in this beautiful, like it's super detailed. In the detailed. game world, is it explained at all why they're fighting each other? I like kind of like honestly, I, I blacked out when the intro <laughs> thing was playing because it was like honor is blah blah life on the battlefield, and I just Jesus. Christ. Um, <laughs> I don't think they care. I think it's pretty self-aware. I wish it was a little funnier in that way, or maybe mm. a little more self-aware. I kind of. Well, I was watching you play it. Yeah. Um, I was watching you show me a video of it, yeah. and I want it to almost be like slightly Monty Python esque uh, with the knights, <laughs> right. like, you know, with arms like flying off. <laughs> It'd be great. I think it, I don't it's know. It's just a flesh wound. But um, yeah, it, it seems like I only did the uh, tutorial on the first intro level. I've yet to do any multiplayer, but I did not know what that game was. And it, it's it, Matt. How would you describe this combat system? Because you played uh, the beta, right? Yeah, point. yeah, I played a bunch of the beta. Uh, it's kind of, so I mean, some people compare it to rock, paper, scissors. And I would agree with that, but only if you're playing rock, paper, scissors in a way that you are trying to kill the other person with a rock, paper, or scissors in real life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, in a way that like, the, like if you have a stone, you can block scissors and then you can smash the guy over the head with the freaking boulder you have in your hands. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I don't know how the paper works. Maybe shove it down their throat and choke them. But uh, <laughs> it, it's it's definitely a kind of thing of this beats that. But uh, it, it's not quite as simple as oh okay well I'm doing this and you're doing that so I win. Right. And Matt is skyping in from a secure unit somewhere. <laughs> yeah. After the spate the spate of paper chokings which occurred in Canada led to his eventual arrest. <laughs> 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 that's why he's, he's such a cheap editor but yeah Chris Chris Thurston our competitive gaming editor yeah. runs the pro channel in the UK yeah. he, he played it quite a bit and he was really into like going back to what Matt was saying about the, the 3v3s in Overwatch Chris was really into the, the 2v2s the, in the Verona and he was talking yeah. about like, the ethics of it like you, you shouldn't like you shouldn't gank the, the, a guy if he's like a lone right a lone uh, dude or whatever because there's meant to be 
more honor, I suppose. I suppose, and that's like an interesting part. I mean, like otherwise, like Matt said, it's yeah, you're you're kind of swinging and blocking wherever your stick is. Uh, that it kind of makes your stance change. Is it like Dark Souls PvP, but with a better combat system? Uh, it's not. I wouldn't. I mean, I'm a I'm a diehard Dark Souls guy. But I mean, has it got that kind of like you know you're circling each other? Yeah, like, absolutely. Who's, who's go There's. In? I mean. So your right stick corresponds to three directions, and wherever you're holding that uh, that stick in each of those quadrants is where your uh, it you'll can't be, be a quadrant if it's three. Excuse me, it's not. <laughs> oh my god, uh, three sections. It's excuse American me. Education. Yeah, system. yeah. Ah, Montana <laughs> education. It's a miracle I'm here, man. Um, any of those three sections is where you'll swing and you'll block. So if and you can see that live on your enemy too. Oh, so can I can I can I like block this lower section yeah. but swing in the upper section? Uh, you have to be quick. That's that's the skill mm. test, right? Is uh, you're watching your enemy and he's like you can see he's going to swing this way because his reticle is pointing to the left and yours is in the left, and so he swings. You block really quick, and then you swing over your your stick, and then swing really quickly and see if can, you can. Can take I dual wield like two blades? I don't it's think like that's swinging. in the game. Uh, some some characters have Do they? dual blades, but it like the combat system doesn't change. It's yeah. still the three sections and swing. Yeah, those characters are just usually faster than the other ones. Oh, okay, mm. um, that seems like a nonsense. But yeah, the, back to Chris Thurston. Thurston's like honor meta. It, it, it's it's inter- I'm curious to see how that part of the game evolves. Because Dark Souls is, is, is kind of a good example. The, the fight clubs um, are totally, in, in, like, just kind of... People are assholes in Dark Souls. They are. They are. But there's, there's like, specific zones that the developers, you know, never painted as fight clubs that people just tend to meet up at and summon one another... For you know, they'll get crowds of folks just for to watch duels happen, even though they could attack each other at any point. It's it's, it's kind of interesting to see that and think about how some four honors, three v three, two v two modes will may or may not reflect that over time. I, if it's like any other online game, I doubt there's going to be much honor. <laughs> do, do do you think there's a but, chance? I don't know what I don't know if there's, you know, any PVE component yeah. at all. But do you think there's a chance that it could be a bit like a Titanfall or something where like not having that kind of that campaign or that single player stuff mm. will ultimately mean that the kind of crowd drifts away. Uh I mean there is a a campaign sort of, but yeah, it, that's that's I don't know if that'll define it or not. Like it's hard to say because it feels it doesn't feel like something I would want to play or is designed for like some kind of single player adventure. Mm. Um so but people, but people seem to have responded to the freshness of going, all right, here's a yeah. PvP game that is like all in on melee. Yeah, like because yeah. melee combat is generally terrible in PvP games. I would say generally, it's usually this, either one hit kill or nothing. Yeah, I will say this: like I've yet to really dive into uh, into the fighting systems, but it just feels good and it looks cool. And I mean, it's it it makes sense without being like it's not super convoluted. So I think it's something that is like poised to be at least successful for. Whoever's interested in it doesn't want to shoot stuff or isn't into like traditional fighting games or something like that. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll pay attention I mean, to it. For me, I, I feel like uh, I, I haven't played any of the single player stuff. Yeah. Um, but I've heard that it's very much just a, a sort of tutorial for the multiplayer. Uh, yeah. And uh, from playing all the multiplayer modes that were available in the beta and the heroes and all that, uh, it I can't definitively say this, but it does feel feel like the kind of thing it, it feels like a titanfall where the next game could be really great uh, yeah. um as whereas this one is i, I think, think titanfall it was a bit late. better than this it's too late and no one buys it <laughs> oh shit yeah, yeah. totally Can't wait for the 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 time travel level in for honor 2 what i mean that's what honor this should CPU? have what it should have that's a time what this should level? have yeah, is that call, time uh, travel i'd call the the final part of the trilogy three honor no, that's <laughs> Oh, I resigned, fine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh, let's move on from there uh, to what we've also been playing and gets its own special topic because we're, we're spe- two special men who want our, our little pedestal. Yeah, tell uh, Tom that while he's away, we went, we changed it up a bit. We went, there's a new section called Now Playing, which comes after the section called Now Playing. <laughs> and we did, in it, we describe what we're playing. Yeah, it's, uh, we've been playing The Division. Um, and like I said, it came out, I think in late March of last year, so it's coming up on a year. Uh, the season pass is almost finished up. Uh, I don't think there's a hard date on Last Stand, which is like a final, more 
focused PvP mode coming out that I really don't care about. Um, but they, since it came out, there have been plenty of balance changes to uh, how you level up and how you progress in terms of getting new loot and they added side the activities. Which weren't there at launch, yeah, were they? new incursions, survival mode, um, like time to death on enemies. Like enemies are still fairly spongy, but. Um, since, you know, day one, they are less spongy overall. They're quicker and easier to kill, even though it's, like, still ridiculous to shoot a man in the face with, you know, four clips. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's overall a, a better game, in my opinion. And I'm kind of curious, because you never finished it when it, like, or finished it, but hit level 30. I, I didn't even nearly finish no, it. Like, no, no. W- when Division first came out, like, I was interested in it, because, as I alluded to earlier, I've played a, I played a lot of um, yeah. Destiny, not on PC, obviously. Um, so I was interested in a game that was like an action MMO hybrid. Yeah. Um, I had like concerns about it that it was coming from like a relatively small studio and it was like, you know, the, 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 the first time they'd made anything like this. Um, and having seen the kind of content droughts in destiny, mm. like I was, I was fearful that the division would suffer the same sort of thing. And, and so it kind of proved, and definitely when it came out, it was rough. Like th- the, the balance stuff you talk about, I think, is not insignificant. Like, Mm-mm. it sucked to be shooting a guy who was wearing a hooded top, like, a hundred times, yeah. it felt like, and him not die. Yeah. It robbed the guns of any sort of power. It robbed the engagements of any sort of drama. Um, but but I kind of went back to it. I can't even really remember why, just on a whim. I just wanted to... Mm. I think because you'd started playing it a bit, so I wanted to try it out. Yeah. Um, and I think exactly, like, for anyone in console land, if they kind of ignored the first year of Destiny and jumped in a year later, they, what you found was a completely different game. Like, I bounced off the Division. I probably got to, like, level 8 or something mm. after playing the beta and then a little bit of the release. And I just didn't like it. I, just, I thought it sucked not to put too fine a point on it. <laughs> and I love it now. Like, I'm yeah. I'm loving it. Like, I'm completely in that grind loop of wanting to gear up. I've just kind of finished... Uh, well, I'm, I'm one mission from finishing the campaign. I'm level right. 29. And I know that's, like, nothing. Like... <laughs> the the problem I have is like, and I don't know what this is like on console, but on PC, like the population of people at my level is non-existent. Yeah. So when I go yeah. into the dark zone, there's like, there's no one there. I had this experience last night where I, I just reached a point where I felt like, all right, I want to try and get some high end gear. I want to experience a dark zone. I'm going to go in. And like, there was just no one else in there except for the like over leveled enemies who would yeah. like just, you know, put it in all my holes with their, <laughs> with their rifles and then send me back out into the, the rest of New York. And the one time, like, so a couple of times I managed to, like, snag a, a bag of goodies that I was trying to extract. Yeah. I, so the, the, the best time, like, the, and the only time I bumped into another guy, he was, like, the same level as me and he was fighting the same group. And I was like, oh, sweet. Like, yeah. we're two, like, you know, strangers, strangers on a, strangers passing and we've kind of, <laughs> we can hang out together and now we'll go and extract this gear and this is going to be amazing. I mean, sure enough, we killed these guys and then I turned around and he was just gone. And it was like, <laughs> Peace. oh man, that's my Valentine's Day. That's how I spent it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so Matt, you, you you also play The Division like a, a bit when it came out. And like from the outside looking in, what what what's your kind of take on that game and like how it's kind of stayed or hasn't stayed in the public consciousness? Uh, well, I mean, it it's... It's been a bit, uh, I mean, like like Tim was saying, it, it's been a bit like Destiny. And mm-hmm. what I'm actually very curious about is, uh, as someone who hated Destiny when it first came out, uh, mm-hmm. like I just could not stand that game. And then like actually got way into it when The Taken King came out. Yeah. Is is that the kind of transformation or the transformation that the de- uh, the division has, has taken, or is it similar, or do you think I, I it think, needs I think something it's, else? Yeah, I think it's that's a really good point you raise. It's not the same sort of transformation no. in the sense of like, well, here's all this raid content that didn't exist. Here's all this extra campaign stuff that didn't exist. What what the division does have though, I think, is um, once you understand what it wants from you, it's actually much more coherent. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. it's this one location that's actually beautifully detailed. So gorgeous. And I think weirdly, what I mean to your to your question of like what what should they do with it, which I think you asked, or if not, I've imagined you asked. The, the New York they built is actually really suited to being expanded on. Yeah. Like, there's there's these sewer sections. There's obviously the buildings you can go in, which are potentially super the rooftops. It's potentially super modular. You could just you could say like, all right, we're going to open up thirty percent more buildings, and we're going to create a bunch more missions in it. That's what that game really needs. It's yeah. like the drip 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 of content. I wonder whether like that. I mean, there's no sense of what they are planning beyond kind of the the the, the final piece of DLC, which is imminent. Yeah. 
I think that's what it does need. What it does not need is for them to try and make the division two and it be a whole separate thing. <laughs> and my worry is that Ubisoft's response will be, well, here's, you know, they're very used to annualized uh, yeah. uh, franchises or whatever. You know, bear in mind, Destiny still doesn't have a Destiny 2. It's no. like, you know, three years into the base game mm-hmm. plus expansions. Mm-hmm. What the division needs, I think, is expansions, like substantial expansions. Because yeah. the engine's great, the feel's great. Um, the player population is probably fucked, so maybe that's their worry. And the, the <laughs> thing you have, the thing you forget is as well, like the division was a huge success at launch. It sold, yeah. it sold tons. Like I think it might have been their yeah. most successful um, new series launch. And it's only like, it, as kind of you know, the community grousing built up, and people you know really started to see the, the flaws in terms of the, the structure of what had been built. Flaws which I predicted. Um, <laughs> I think that that now it's kind of perceived slightly more as failure is too strong a word, but like a troubled series. I mean, it came out last year, right? Uh, yeah, like around the end of March, like I said. And, and it was nowhere in any kind of game of the year lists or like. Uh, no, I yeah. You know what I mean, like when no we were talking, talking about, about the end of the year, I forgot it even came out. It was P- playing it now, and I don't want to overstate this. I'm enjoying it as much as I've enjoyed anything in at least yeah. six months. Like I'm yeah. really having good fun with it. My only concern is, like I say, like I don't know how I'm gonna. I don't know how I'm going to bully people other than you, James, into like playing it with me because I need like I want to have like a team of four people to go and run the incursions with. And yeah, there's some really cool. Uh, it feels really nice to, you know, take on because enemies also level and 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 get harder to kill the more players you have. But to synergize all your powers and even if like you're not taking on something particularly difficult, just to like toss out all your bombs or whatever the hell all at once and dart between cover and like start a simple flanking maneuver. Um, there, there, there was a. I don't want to talk about it too much because yeah. people are just sick of it. But there was a boss. <laughs> there was a boss battle in the Lexington Hall, which we talked about a little bit. Where yeah. there's the, the kind of the front bit is like a stage for like there's a catwalk I think for like a fashion show mm. and there's is it like yeah in a big hall, and then the area where you kind of you spawn into the fight. There's a lot of kind of stairs and back corridors, yeah, and you have yeah. to really manipulate the scenery to kind of funnel these really super powerful enemies so that you're you're laying down turrets and you're hitting them with kind of a smoke grenade and then you're ducking around and finding a new firing position. It's actually pretty smart design. Yeah. And I think one of the big lessons for me personally anyway is like a relatively old man who's been writing about games for a long time is like these games nowadays, the same thing can be said of the, you know, the last... Um, Final Fantasy is they can sometimes survive like very troubled launches yeah. and do warrant a second look. Yeah, you know, up to a year down the line, you know, we're, yeah. you know, we're coming up to March, aren't we? And it's it's very easy, I think, as someone who plays a lot of games to to get a very fixed idea in your head of like, oh well, the division wasn't for me, and it was like the combat was shit, and you know, I'm not interested in it. When in fact, like substantial changes can be made yeah. just just via patches. You know, patches are often maligned. Um, I'm really rambling now. Patches are good, says PC Game. Right? <laughs> well, I mean, for play the game, division. Come yeah. and play the division with me. If you want to play with me, yeah. anyone watching or listening to this, add me on Uplay, Timothy D. Clark. I will accept your invitation. I wish I rem- remembered my Uplay name because I would also say that. You're but a liar. It's PCG underscore James. Oh, PCG. P- there you go. Or or uh, or one of those tall dashes or whatever they're called. Yeah. Um, Come and play with us. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm having a lot of fun. I'm kind of. Me. Excited to! I just hope year two is, if year two exists, is a bit more PVE content. But yeah. we'll see. Um, let's move on from the division to Resident Evil 7's Madhouse difficulty mode. So, Matt, you've been playing through this for some reason. You played this through this game like twice normally, right? Yeah. And then, and this is all one after the other, like one playthrough after the other. And now you're going through on Madhouse, and you're streaming it mostly on Twitch. Uh, and you, you wrote a piece for us um, called Resident Evil 7's Madhouse is a great example of difficulty done right. And I I'm mean, wondering what the hell your case is because uh, watching you play that shit looks tedious. When I when I watched it, he couldn't get past the first boss who's your no. girlfriend. Yeah, and, and it's like a, that, that that was basically a, whole, a tutorial. That was a, night, that was a night of Twitch. It's like a tutorial in, in like any other mode, right? Yeah. It's uh, So what, what make your case, man. Sorry, sorry, my headphones fell out, and I was like, oh, God, I can't hear them. <laughs> Make your case for Resident Evil 7's Madhouse difficulty mode, because it okay. looks like bullshit to me. All right, so the reason uh, why I didn't get past the first boss, and it took me forever to get past that, uh, the first little, literally supposed to be the easiest encounter of the game, yeah. uh, because I had never used the blocking mechanic before. I had straight up throughout my entire playthrough of normal in the first run, 
second run, never used it. Uh, I, I've been accused of running through the game because I said I never used it. Just shoot them in the head and they'll blow up. You don't need a block, man. Just yeah, hit I, them. I barely blocked on my first uh, place. It, doesn't, it teaches yeah. you to do it once, but it doesn't like, require you to use it. It's not a and satisfying mechanic to no. use either because it's really unclear of like what you're going to block and what you Yeah, what and, you and, and when someone hits you, yeah. it still looks like it's hurting you. Like, Cause it's not like a fighting game where you're going to learn the, the, you know, yeah. how many frames and like yeah. to the pixel, what distance you need to block something. Like Every attack's different. Like, mm. oh... Where does the big goop monster? When do I need to start blocking his enormous <laughs> blade yep. fist swing? I don't know. Totally, and this and uh, it's oh, just, it's I should not note spoilers maybe for people listening. So skip ahead because we're going to probably talk some details. Maybe I'll try. I'll try okay. not to yeah, spoil. Yeah, we'll try our best. But, you know, um, just if you haven't played it yet, keep note. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, like I I never used it because and even when you do get hit, like yeah. I had enough healing items to just heal myself. Um, but in Madhouse, like you have to block and be and like Mia that fight is just piss easy. If, if you've got it, uh, if you've got the blocking down, cause every, every like downward swing of the chainsaw gets blocked by the pistol. Cause somehow a gun can beat a chainsaw. Um, but as soon as I learned that, like one try beat her and that, that kind of set up the first, like, this is the big change of this mode is that you actually have to block because mm. you're, you're going to be taking hits regardless of how good you are with a gun um, because enemies are faster and stronger than you now. Um, and like, okay, that's, that's just a normal difficulty ramp up. Like, oh, mo monsters are stronger in hard mode. Um, and it, it seemed pretty much exactly like that uh, for the next like 20 minutes or so running away from Jack, trying to get to the first safe house or safe uh, room to, uh, to get the, uh, to trigger the cop cutscene to get the pocket knife and get into the garage. And that's when things kind of took a turn where I realized, oh, this mode is going to play off my expectations. Like mm. this mode almost sort of knows that I've played through this game twice. I know this game from heart. I know what parts I can skip and what parts I don't have to do at all. Uh, but no, I run over to where the keys are and there's a locked box and I can mm. only get into it with a lock pick. And I immediately freaked out because I thought, crap, was there a lock pick that I was supposed to get before this room? Mm. Uh, so I ran around the, the garage looking for it. It's, it's on a shelf. So I grabbed it, opened the box. And that's when I thought, okay, things are going to be different. Uh, literally go into the room, into the first like main foyer after that fight. There are three bird cages. One has a scorpion key. And the scorpion key is in a room behind a bunch of enemies. Uh, in the normal game. Yeah. Uh, and I thought, okay, well, if I buy it now, I don't have to go into that room right away. I can do a bunch of other stuff. So I grabbed it, ran into uh, the nearby Scorpion door, and then Jack comes out of nowhere. And he's not supposed to be chasing you until like 20 minutes later. Mm. So he's on your ass right away. <laughs> um, and I was like, crap, I got to go to the safe room. Run to the safe room down the hallway. Freaking monster jumps out of nowhere. <laughs> like... It wasn't there before. There's a video of me flipping out at this. Like yeah, it yeah. was probably the, it was the scariest moment of the game up to that point for me. Like it, it was just, I did not expect it and it killed me almost immediately. So, so it seems, it seems that Resident Evil 7's Madhouse is like, it, A, like you said, it, it ramps up enemy health and some stuff like that as you'd expect, but it literally rearranges you know, when it, your events in the game, in the timeline of the game, and where enemies appear, right? And yeah. the, uh, the tools you have, right? So you can get a bunch of different weapons and stuff like that as well? Uh, it, yeah, sort of. Sort uh, of? I mean, the scorpion key is in that cage, and okay. you have to pay to get it out of there with antique coins. Yeah. And in the normal game, you get the scorpion key to get the shotgun, to get the broken shotgun, to get the real shotgun, and yes. then shoot guys in the head. Yeah. Um, but this time you don't actually need the scorpion key to get the shotgun. And it's kind of a dirty, filthy trick they play on you. <laughs> it's funny. Because you find the model shotgun earlier in the game than you do in the normal game. Mm. And I, when I reloaded, I didn't buy the scorpion key because I thought, okay, I'll hold off on it. And then there's a cutscene that plays right before a boss fight. And that's actually where you find the model shotgun. And I was just like, holy shit. They almost got me to pay money <laughs> to get a shotgun that I could have gotten pretend, without this. Pretend money. Pretend money. <laughs> yeah, to yeah, totally. Um, and it was, uh, 
it, it was just a, it was just another moment of just holy yeah. crap. This game is this game is really going to screw with me throughout the entire time. Uh, and it's 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 been way scarier because of that because I don't know what item I'm going to find in this right. chest that I know is there and I know it had a shotgun in it or whatever. Uh, but now it's going to have flamethrower ammo and the flamethrower sucks. So you're kind of screwed. It does suck. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's it's and then also there there is the frustrating like holy sh- crap this boss is incredibly hard and yeah. I have to like kind of butt my head against it for a bit. But uh, like the the moments of just pure like I know exactly what's supposed to happen here, but that's not what's going to happen uh, is what keeps me on my edge of my seat. Uh, and it is an awesome experience. That game is just brilliant. What, what game has done a flamethrower right? Oh man! Did, did, did uh, dude Alien t- Isolation. Yeah, maybe it's pretty good. Did it, was, it do all right? It was. I mean, yeah. that's that's the one I'd think would do right. Wasn't that one of the one of the old World War Two Call of Duties had a good flamethrower in it that rings a bell? Oh gosh, it's been so long since I played those. The, pr- the, the division actually, the the buddies flamethrowers are pretty good. They are pretty they're good. They're burning the city, right? Super lethal. Cleaning yeah, it. the cleaners. They're also really good because they're fun to shoot in the back and make explode. Yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. Nice. But um, it kind of a real quick question off the tail of Resident Evil 7's difficulty. I hate it when games just like make enemies harder to kill and you easier to kill. Can you guys think of any other games off the top of your head that do difficulty differently or uh, tr- you know put some extra thought into it? I tell you what I don't like is yeah. games. Well, I don't like a lot of things. Yeah. I, don't like, <laughs> I, I don't like games when they, from the get go, say, pick your difficulty, and you have no sense. Yeah. You have no sense right. of what it means. If like, this I don't is know, the whether true you, way yeah, to play. Your like, normal what? to me might not. But then equally, I don't like it when a game has no difficulty setting. Like yeah, you're just true. like, you're you're coming on this ride, and you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna accept. I get it really nervous. It yeah, I'm like, what if I don't like it? Uh, uh, I the one that comes to mind is DMC Devil May Cry. Oh, uh, when you. Uh, I think you beat the game on hard. You right. unlock like four different difficulties. And one games. is just a way harder version of the game. One is uh, everyone takes one hit and you take one hit. Oh, cool. And then the one is it's really hard. And also you just take one hit. Uh, <laughs> and that though, I mean, that game was awesome on its own. I would have played through it anyway, multiple times, but those modes, it was just kind of fun to run through the game shooting everyone with a pistol that normally does no damage. Uh, so that's the one that comes to mind uh, that is in Resident Evil 7. Hardness for hardness sake isn't really my yeah. jam. I think I remember, I don't think this was, I don't think this ever came to PC, but I think in that Ninja Gaiden, the Team Ninja game, if you chose easy mode, it made your character wear a ribbon uh, on your arm, like a pink that's ribbon. That's right. Yeah, for the whole game. Yeah. Just to go. <laughs> Shame on slightly, you. Slightly, yeah. Shame on slightly you. Slightly sexist, I guess. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, there was the there was the Borderlands Two girlfriend mode. Oh god, that was yeah. hyped uh, before release. Awful, stupid, awful, <laughs> dumb. Oh well. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 just like really surprised to see Resident Evil 7's Madhouse mode shake things up a bit because it. They I don't they, know. they don't. Um, the mistake I think is they don't uh, tell you that that's the case. I mean, no, Matt's right? saying that is the first I've heard of it. I just assu- I just assumed the baddies took more damage, yeah. or they did more damage. Yeah. Like I, I I would completely agree that games which switch up item locations or scenarios that's really interesting to me because I generally don't replay any games. Like I just can't be bothered. There's always other games to play. Mm-hmm. I say that as a man he has <laughs> sunk a lot of hours into grind games, but I kind of feel like you're still trying to chase different the stuff. Then. Yeah, yeah, you're you're chasing goals. Yeah, yeah. Pretend, in but, this case, uh, pretend guns. I know I give you a lot of flack, Matt, uh, because you're awful at that game. And if you watch his streams, he is just he's god awful. Um, he plays with the controller, and he doesn't know how to shoot at the enemy head. Hey, you know what? The but the keyboard was not designed for gameplay, man. Okay, whatever. And wow, wow, you say yeah, that on the I'm PC coming Gamer podcast? I'm on to the PC Gamer show, and I'm oh. bringing the heat. All right, yeah. Well, it's been nice knowing you. Um, <laughs> no, no, no trousers, hates keyboards. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, let's move on real quick. Um, we're running out of time, but let's let's hit this uh, last topic. Um, Valve dumping Greenlight. Uh, if you didn't know uh, what Greenlight was, it was basically an approval process for games without you know big publishers behind them to get onto Steam. You'd pay a hundred bucks, and you'd have to go through an approval. Uh, you'd get voted up by the community, and if you reached a certain threshold, you would then be able to sell your game on Steam. And uh, since then. 
as evidenced by Tyler did a the weirdest games on Greenlight or something like that, the worst games on Greenlight. It's become a sort of mm, not entirely a trash heap, but it's been uh, kind of forgotten about and tends to have pretty awful stuff on there um, surfacing uh, more so than not. Uh, and so in a recent roundtable where Evan, like you said, uh, flew up to Valve HQ, uh, they said they're going to dump Greenlight for something called Steam Direct, which it's unclear exactly what that is. They're still uh, talking about details and working out specifics, but the gist is that it's going to be get rid of the community approval mm. aspect of Greenlight and just make it a fee. If you can afford the fee, you can sell your game and they talked about Steam. anything. It could be anything between two hundred dollars and five grand. Yeah, I right? think they That's gave uh, they the, gave it. It was like between a hundred to five thousand dollars, which is yeah. not very helpful because there's you know. <laughs> I mean, if I'm getting a bill and it could be a hundred dollars, <laughs> yeah, or it could be five thousand dollars. I'd be nervous to know the exact. Yeah. Figure. So I kind of want to know. I mean, Steam already has. They they can recoup some of that money via sales though, right? Yes, or, or, yes. Or via some and and they've they've mentioned apparently. that it's something that they yeah they can recoup through sales or get refunded. Like Valve is still like talking about ways to make that easier yeah. to swallow for developers who cannot afford that um, uh, in the long term. But I'm kind of wondering like Steam already has uh, it's already crowded as is with the green lights approval process and with this sort of opening the floodgates to whoever can afford it. What do you guys, what's your kind of take on this new approach um, to getting games on Steam? And what, what is Steam going to look like if this goes through? Uh, you know, it's it's an interesting thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I, think it's a, I think it's a good thing because I don't think Steam Greenlight is a good thing. No, it's not. Uh, particularly because I voted for Hellgate and it still hasn't come to Steam. I'm very bummed <laughs> out about that. Uh, I want a proper sequel to Hellgate London. Um, forget about the division. Uh, but honestly, it, it's it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens because if it's too expensive, we might actually see like a slowing down of the just insane amount of games yeah. we see. Um, but like, I I don't want like a small indie developer who makes a really cool small game to be prevented from getting onto Steam because they couldn't afford an application fee. Um, that that kind of seems counter to what steam has become. Mm -hmm. Um, it, I, it's hard to, it's hard to have an opinion on this when you're not a developer right. and you're not you're someone not affected by this directly to pay rent with, uh, cause like yeah. what happens to us is that, Oh, steam becomes like, this is probably going to make steam less crowded than it is right now. Maybe not uncrowded, but like, the only thing that affects us is, oh, hey, there are easy, games are easier to find because there are only four coming out this week instead of 300. Uh, <laughs> so, like, it feels kind of weird having an opinion on it. But I think it's a good thing. I, I hope they do it right, and I hope it, it's fair to developers. Sure. Um, but I think I think in all in all of this, Steam just has to communicate with developers the most and ho hopefully get this stuff, stuff worked out for them. Mm. I don't want to seem blase about it, but it mostly seems fine. Greenlight yeah. was unloved. It mostly become like a byword um, for not great quality, for for, cer for certainly wildly variant quality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so removing that seems sensible to me. Um, perhaps there could be like some sort of sliding scale of fees. Perhaps it, perhaps mm. a one perhaps a one size fits all approach isn't sure. best. Uh, we'll see. Um, yeah, I think like like Matt says, without us being the ones submitting games and paying for them, it's, it's kind of hard to take. It's hard to have a real. Video. It's, it's hard to feel too strongly either way. It was it was interesting as much as just Valve announcing anything's interesting, right? To do with mm -hmm. with, with Steam, but I don't feel like materially it's gonna change our day. Yeah, that I think much. yeah on on the I hate the word, but consumer end. People, welcome consumers. Yeah, it's welcome consumers. <laughs> People won't be able to tell really what's going on. I just hope. My hope is that the fee, or it, it, like you said, is, is uh, works out be best for, or is somehow easy to swallow, as easy to swallow for all developers as I it mean, can it, be. It probably brings them closer uh, into line with how other digital download platforms yeah. work generally, right? Yeah, uh, generally. I mean, like the vo the voting thing seemed too easy to schematize. Yeah, and and it was tough for developers because they would just have to kind of sit and wait for the the go. Oh, I can start doing my game now, marketing for it and whatever. But and like um, Matt said, you you would vote on something and then yeah. like never hear of, from it again. Yeah. I don't think that was a satisfying no. experience for the users. But um, really, 
But, uh, you know, a lot of criticism comes from uh, uh, people compare it or itch.io's scheme, which is there's no approval process. You can sell your game, make money on it, and itch.io doesn't take any proceeds. But I don't think, in my opinion, I don't think they're easily comparable. In itch.io, you have this, like, kind of tight-knit, I wouldn't say tight-knit, but it's a, it's, there's a type of game that goes on itch.io. Would you say hipster? I, w- I wouldn't say hipster because, well, because people call me that all the time and I hate it, um, even though I am one. Uh, but it, it seems to be home to uh, smaller, more experimental games for now, and that may change. Um, it may grow to compete with Steam in a lot of ways or in certain sectors, but I don't think there's a crossover there directly, um, uh, even if there I, I think the big to look to. Sorry? Go oh. for it. I think uh, I think a big well, I mean it's not a big problem because I haven't heard anything yeah. uh, in this way, but uh, I, I know that some people have talked about itchio's uh, they don't have an approval process yeah. to get your game on there. Um, having like a game that you open and it gives your computer malware, uh, which which sounds <laughs> like a very like it sounds like something my mom would be afraid of. Um, but they they even <laughs> responded I heard to your, someone I heard asked your mom's full of viruses, Matt. <laughs> 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 uh but anyway um yeah day. so they they've even responded to that with they they try their best to um to like moderate that stuff to make yeah. sure there isn't anything like that on the site um but it, it if like if steam did that then there, there's no way there wouldn't be malware all over that uh that section of steam if, if they said no approval process everything is allowed on steam right and, and they're so plus, like yeah Sorry it's something that works for itch.io. That's just not going to work for Steam. And in to be any fair, itch.io has like just endless piles of shit on there, endless piles of nonsense. They do a good job of surfacing some good stuff, but it's you know has a lot of the same problems as Steam. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's it's something we're gonna all gonna keep our eye on, I think. And it's not really going to like I said, I doubt it'll affect us directly. But um, I'm glad that Valve is at their slow pace making some kind of sign that they're listening or changing stuff up, even if it's like once every five years. Um, but yeah, let's move on really quickly to a couple uh, questions and then we'll wrap up the show. Uh, so we got some of these from the Discord um, in our PC Gamer Discord. If you want an invite, DM me. Um, <laughs> Pierre Fouquet. I don't know how to say your last name, man. I'm sorry. Fouquet. Uh any sim racing fans in the PCG offices? I'm talking proper sims, not Forza or GT. All right, geez. And <laughs> what you looking forward to from Project Cars 2 the most? What about Dirt 4? Well, you guys play racing sims at all? Nope. Neither Rocket League. <laughs> Rocket League is about as close as I get. Forza. So I, I have done in the past in my console days, yeah. but yeah, not on PC. Sims, it's kind of hard to come by big fans of those uh, in our office because I feel like those games are the kind of games you just, that's all you play. It's your, your only jam. And we are pretty... Did you ever buy one of those wheels, the ones you clamp to your desk? And all I that? always thought about it, but then I realized I don't like having junk in my house. Um, sorry, man, he's going to be pissed off. But it's just, you know, I it, it's not something I would use very often. I, I've tried ours. We have one in the office and I've hooked up Forza. Sorry, Pierre. Um, and uh, it's fantastic. I'll, I'll be I'll be the shadow. I want to say I hope Project Cars looks amazing because if yeah. it does, then it'll be it'll be a good game to like push some of the the, the high end PCs that we've got in the office. Absolutely, LPC and a couple others, put them through their paces. That'd be definitely good for that. It's simulating like some car. crazy shit. It's simulating like how quickly certain surfaces absorb water, and puddles have their own <laughs> liquid phys. It's ridiculous the shit going they're doing in that game. So it's going to be awesome to. You know, turn on high and make somebody play. I was like, you know, when you you know when you're going through like the um, the graphic settings in games, and they yeah. have like, um, oh, what is that one called? Like subsurface scattering. Or something <laughs> yeah. Like that. And it's like when you read the explanation of it, and Tyler has a really good um, breakdown of like different graphics yeah. settings on the yeah. site. But it's like, yeah, like how light gets, uh, like how light penetrates different types of objects, yeah. like skin and stuff. And you're like, no fucking way can I see that on my <laughs> monitor? Like, come on. <laughs> Maybe. You oh can. well. Maybe um. We have another question here from Silent Marine. Any of the staff have any favorite off-screen moments with others before or after the show? Do we get along? Um, I mean, we spent like 
20 minutes off screen before this one's trying to make it work. <laughs> yeah. It work. I would say that was my least favorite moment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when I flipped James the bird right yeah, before Matt the show, that off. was pretty good. Oh, the, so the best moment from, pers- from speaking personally, yeah. from during the show, which uh, Tom did turn into a little video, was when he and I were once talking about Hearthstone <laughs> and James literally just fucking glazes over and like leans back in his chair and you can see him thinking about, I don't know, the rapture coming to take him or <laughs> Please, please. That's a, that's a fine moment. Uh, yeah, it played off well and then he put it to Hello Darkness and gave me that clip, so that was nice. Um, when it comes to Matt, no. Yeah. I don't really like him, so. It's just my I love you, James. All right, buddy. Uh, <laughs> he'll be able to look back on his one and only appearance fondly I think <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, oh hey from Will one of our video dudes he's right out there um, is there anything you're looking forward to hearing about from the PC Gamer Weekender in London this weekend so Tim can you kind of give us a quick rundown of what the Weekender is and sort of yeah, it's a, it's a multi-day event taking place in London mm. over a weekend, as, yeah. as the name oh, suggests. Hey. <laughs> uh, I should pull up the dates and, and info in case anyone hears this and wants to fly to London quickly. Uh, Tom's, Tom's going over to do some stage stuff. We've got kind of demos. Yeah. Uh, you can go hands-on with a bunch of games. Uh, see if you can pull the list up. That would be cool. Um, Jared, our hardware guy, is uh, also um, a bunch. flying over to do some sort of workshops on PC building. Um, Program. If you go to weekender.pcgamer.com, you can find all the, the details of who's on the developer stage. There's a VR zone. Uh, like I said, there's hardware stuff you can check out. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch of stuff. We got, let's see, Dawn of War 3, Endless Legend, Endless Space 2, Motorsport Manager, Sonic Mania, Company Heroes 2. What is this? Total War Warhammer. Yeah, uh, Tripwire with Rising Storm. Sega Zone. Rising uh, Storm 2, sorry. Vietnam. Tekken 7. Little Nightmares looks really cool. Um, I don't know if you guys know about that, but check that out if you like spooky platformers. Meet, meet us in person. That's the big draw. Yeah, all, yeah. All the, um, all the UK team will be there. Uh, Tom Marks, Jared Walton from yeah. the US team. Yeah, that's why Tom's it'll, not here. It, it'll be a good time. Um, I would love to go someday and uh, as, as just an attendee and hang out with all the like-minded folks. But yeah, check it out if you can. Um, it's pretty neat. Uh, we do have one more question, Wask. Uh Real quick, any of you playing any Guilty Pleasure games now? Chris86. Guilty, guilty Pleasure. Guilty Pleasure implies like it's a game you think is bad, but you play it anyway. Hmm. Hmm. Division, I think, is good, though, even though it's, like it's a glaring pleasure. issues. Yeah. Um, I, I yeah. don't really play it anymore, but like the Bureau XCOM Declassified was one of those games that like I just loved, despite it just being not a great game. It's, being awful. Oh, it's not a guilty pleasure, but a game I can tell you that um, I did jump back into, mm. which kind of goes back to my jumping back into things, things was uh, Overland, an uh, indie game I wrote about last year. Uh, you're driving across country from the east to the oh, west coast yeah. of America post some sort of uh, disaster that's led to monsters roaming across the land. Mm. And it's kind of, um, it's like a turn-based uh, action thing isometric you need to basically keep your car juiced with fuel you can pick up dogs other passengers you need to keep kind of yeah. keep grabbing resources like weapons and yeah. stuff and that's changed a lot since it's still in beta yeah. um, or early access I forget which it's on itch I think it's on itch.io yeah, actually yeah 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 um, really cool studio Finger making it um, yeah and th- so when I when I played it last year, the balance was a bit off. You would get basically like a few regions in because it's broken down into regions and it would just get too hard. But now the the decisions feel much more meaningful mm. and the levels feel much more um, fair to you as the player in terms of like the little problems that you've got, you know, X number of moves before you become overrun Eventually. by the monsters. So yeah, if you like a kind of like a tense, survivally sort of XCOM-y type indie experience, yeah. I would recommend checking that out. I think you have to... Apply to be on the beta, or yeah, they, I'm not sure yeah, I, I don't know, how, know exactly how it's that I was thing works, but yeah, get in there if you can. It's it's really, really cool. Um, for me, nah, I don't I don't feel any guilt over anything I play. So you, you know. feel guilt when you're not playing games. That's true. That's how much you <laughs> love games. That's true. No shame. Uh, I do feel a little like I feel something sick when I watch Matt play Madhouse. I don't know. It's I don't know if, if that counts. It's just kind of illness, but. <laughs> Uh, otherwise, pretty good. Um, well, that's going to do it for us today on the PC Gamer Show. Uh, we should be back live if we work out our issues. We have a week to do it. I believe in us. 
next Wednesday, we're 1 p.m. We basically need to solve a capture. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that's what, that's what <laughs> I've done. We don't know what's going on. We'll figure it out. Um, 1 p.m. Uh, every Wednesday, uh, you can find us on twitch.tv slash pcgamer or on youtube.com slash pcgamer after the fact. Um, or you can head to pcgamer.com and uh, find our podcast there and our whole history of them uh, if, if that's uh, the way you want to do it. Uh, and yeah, look for uh, in our... I think on our Twitch page, you can find the information for uh, how to join our Discord. So if you're curious about joining our really cool community, um, it's really it's it's slow going right now. We're we're still like ramping ramping it up, but it's a really kind of tight it's group. Cozy in there. It's real cozy. It's there, we got some good regulars, and I can hop in there and just chat anytime. Like Matt and I uh, play games regularly with a few of them too now. Make some of them play the division with me. best friends. Best fr- no one. I, that's the one thing is I drop the division in there, and everyone's like, nope. Crickets. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so uh, we'll we'll see you guys later. Thanks for joining me. Don't stand up, Matt. Don't. Don't do it. I won't. I'm holding myself down. <laughs>